Welcome to Gallus Coder. Today we will have a look what is in this box. What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> no, it's not a hat. It's a chess computer from 1982, a micro chess computer. Apparently it's not working or not tested. And the bishop is missing. I know lots and lots of kids that are not worried about bishops going missing. So, ooh, it is packaged nicely. So here it is. It is indeed boxed. The world's first mini shark computer with sensor technique. So the first world chess computer with sensors. The Novak Micro Chess. Reistasje für Novak Micro Chess, or as I call it, pouch. If this channel was monetized, it would now have been demonetized and cancelled. Actually, this is all in German, and the reason for that is the guy that I bought it from lives in Limbricht. And that is literally one kilometer away from where my parents lived, so I realized, oh, they could have just picked it up and brought it to me, saved myself on postage. When you live in the south of the Netherlands, close to Germany, it makes sense to jump into Germany to buy gas, uh, electronics and even some food products because Germany is a lot cheaper in that uh, aspect. And even today it serves to go into Germany to buy your electronics because we have 21% VAT or tax and they have 19 or 19.5% so even on tax you already save quite a lot. Even has the price on it, 198 German marks from the Kaufhof. Let's uh, have a look inside. Oh my god, it even has the books. Oh my god! The guarantee card. Kaufhof Aktiengesellschaft. What's that? Zweige Niederklassung Aachen. So it's from Aachen, which makes sense. That is about 30 40 minutes from Limbericht or Sittard. Yeah, 198 German marks and 20 pounds for something else. Probably a blow up bell or something. Yeah, that is so cool. Ah, the Kurzanleitung, the short uh, uh, manual. Anstellen, rechten, seitlichen Schalter auf ON. So there's a switch on the right side that you need to set to ON. New game, drücken, press the button new game. Spielstufen einstellen, level drücken. So in order to set the level, you have to press level. Eine der acht Stufen durch wiederholtes Drücken von Level einstellen. So you can set up to eight difficulty levels. I hope that they also have a difficulty level of 0.25 because I'm a terrible chess player to be honest. Iatsuk, so that is your turn. Figur jeweils mit leichtem Druck vom Vonfeld auf das Nachfeld ziehen. So you have to press the piece on the place that you're moving it from and press it again on the place that you're going to put it. Wow. If that is broken, then it will be, well, nigh on impossible to fix. But I didn't pay too much for this. Uh, Betriebsanleitung, oh, all in German. Luckily, I can read German. Most Dutch people can speak and read German. Although we sound like miners when we do. Wow, look at that. This is near mint, yeah, that is the chess. It's the on and off. But I see all the pieces there. He said the bishop was missing. I have all the pieces and there's even spare pieces. There's no bishop there. Oh, I see it. Oh, he changed the bishop for a pawn. Look at how small these pawns are. They're even smaller than my pawn and that is saying something. That is really tiny. So you have to press. I don't feel a clicky clicky. But it also means that these stalks need to be long enough. Oh my god, what did I get myself into? Yeah, there is a gap here that will catch bubbles or 
chair. Oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? Well, let me first cast this, uh, this bishop, and then we will have a look at the board. If that, if I cannot fix it, oh, it's also a bit bowed. Yeah, that's H. If I cannot fix it, I at least have a micro chess uh, set. So I will need to make a mold for this tiny guy. And I think the dimensions of this stalk actually matter because you have to press it down. So it needs to be at least that tall. So my idea is I glue it on this checker piece and I will use this cap as a mold box. So I will put this in there with this uh, stuck to it and then pour the rubber in here. And then I also, because we will fill it upside down, I have a nice big reservoir to put the uh, resin into. So let's give this a try. You've got to be kidding, it's just... Yeah, it's a little bit too shallow. I would like a bit more on the tip. A very appropriate mixing cup. Kutschotje in Dutch means uh, a little cunt shot. <laughs> Actually, why don't I take two of these cups and put this in there? That'll work nicely, yeah. No, it does not, because the green tree huggers don't demand us to have plastic cups. And the silicone is stuck on the inside, even though it has a plastic coating. But, okay, you will see. Tack this to the bottom. Us effects guys are not really the guys that will make mold boxes and we just wing it with stuff that we can find, because usually on set or with movie productions you never have time so we are very good at improvising i mix up a batch of pretzel rubber which is one to one by weight or by volume and this is the stuff that we just carry in the shop and as soon as i add the second compound yeah then time starts to tick i have about a six minute work time with this rubber usually people don't use pretzel um, because, well, first of all, it's really expensive. Uh, secondly, it has some curing inhibitions with certain uh, things. I should have warmed up the silicone because it's really stringy. Usually it flows a bit better, uh, but it's so cold in this room. And yeah, with the current energy prices, it is not wise to run the heater. You can see it runs like a really thick syrup. Usually you have a nice tiny stream. So I know that for the next time I will put my cans first on the heater. Live and learn. So the bishop is drowning in rubber. And we have to let it cure for about 40 to 50 minutes, maybe a bit longer because it's so cold. So in the meantime, I put my attention on to the chess computer itself. Let's have a look, remove the screws and see what we're dealing with. I was actually surprised when I opened it to see that we have two tiers. We have the main PCB and underneath that there is another printed circuit board, I believe, with the location for the pieces that you press into. And as I lifted up this board, there was this sticky back covering there that I needed to undo. I realized that the connector on the left side where my finger is now, uh, wasn't inserted or partially inserted. In order to find this, I need to take off this piezo and these blue wires. So I will desolder them in a moment so we can actually uh, have a better look. Yeah, these need to go. And this is the moment that I notice it. Like, hey, why is that ribbon cable flopping around? 
So you can really see that it's only partially in there. And there's a red bodge wire that is actually, as I found out later, from the factory. It's not the previous owner. But yeah, it just came out. So I have to undo all these wires in order to get to it because it's really a tiny, tiny space. Here I'm wrestling to get it in. But yeah, the slot is just too narrow, too small, and my fingers are too big. So I cannot really get it in. It's really poorly designed. <sighs> it took me five minutes to be honest, and a lot of cursing. Literally a five minute hassle cut it in. But it is indeed a bit wonky. Uh, and now I blend the LEDs in this battle of wheels. I now need to align, but it sits. Do we have the LEDs there? Yes, okay. Jesus Christ, that was really, really fucking difficult. And I hope that bodge is correct, but it seems to be a factory bodge. Let me check all the buttons that they align. Yeah, all right. Now I will reconnect the wires of the switch and the, of the piezo and let's see what happens. New game. White. Blackstone. Well, that was an easy fix. Just reseat the cable and voila. And I'm amazed because you don't need to so give a lot of force when you push down on these pieces. It there. It's really a nice and subtle experience. I really like this machine. Uh, now let's have a look at our bishop. So I'm cutting away the cardboard cup. And this is when I realized Oh darn, this cardboard really adheres to the silicone because it's so enormously porous. Actually, it has a plastic coating, but for some reason that just didn't work. So this was a hassle. I'm really cursing myself. And now I know that next time I will just spray it with a hell of a lot of mold release because we can't get these plastic cups anymore. That's a pity. Fuck this left wing bullshit with cardboard. Who wants cardboard? Tastes fucking terrible. That was me thinking out loud. Sorry about that. So after the mold was uh, sort of liberated from the cardboard, I mixed the polyurethane. It's a two compound. It's a one to one on weight and volume, this stuff that I use. I really love this polyform. The thing though is that with these small badges you have to be really accurate. You need to use a skill. If you're 30% off, you don't really notice it on these small amounts, but then it will not cure, it will remain uh, gooey, just like a gummy bear. And you need to thoroughly stir it and then we will inject it. And usually your first casting is more like a learning experience, especially with this piece. I had to do a second casting to get it right. So this first casting that I'm getting out misses the little tip on the head of the bishop. And that is a detail that I really want to capture actually. And of course there is a bubble in the visor and that was something that I expected. And that will also be in the second casting, but I need to get that uh, tip cast it so I will force some more resin into the mold and then squeeze it in. Hold it open. Now we have don't want any air bubbles. Squish it in and out. Now I will fill it up. Hope that will be a bit better. 
The thing with molds is that each mold is unique. So you will learn as you use them how to uh, actually use them appropriately. So I was missing that top bit. So I think let's really inject it, squeeze it and hope it will get in there. I do not have a pressure pot. It's something that is high on my waiting list. But you also need a big compressor. I don't have a big compressor. So it gets a bit expensive for something that I do not really use all the time. So it's curing. We'll see what happens. So an hour later, look at that. Yes, we've got the tip. And there's flashing. Well, we cut it off later on. I just first squeeze it down so I have a nice line to cut. And we did catch a tiny bubble in the visor, but yeah, we expected that, and a tiny bubble on the collar. And we can cut that one off. Usually a bubble is an indent, but this is actually a, uh, a barnacle. So there we go, we cut it off. It is very easy to cut when it's still not fully cured. Uh, yeah, that visor, I'll just keep it there. I didn't have black pigment, so I have to spray them. So this is the second coat that goes on there. And then the set and clear coat when everything is dry. And it will look like this. And that is a nice copy of the Bishop. We now have a complete working chess set. Awesome. Love that 80s wood grain trim. Our restored bishop. Our restored, recreated. And it just registers it. Awesome. It's working. So there you have it. A refurbished Novak Micro Chess computer from 1981-1982. I love the 80s kitsch wood grain. It's, it's awesome. And the fact that it came in the box, that was what won me over to do this refurbishment. We recreated the Bishop by creating a silicone mold and doing a uh, polyurethane cast out of it. Well, actually two casts. First attempt was a bit dodgy. And yeah, what was broken was only the connector cable for the keypad or the board wasn't seated properly. So receding it, it just works. It is awesome. So this will stand on my cabinet between all the other boxed 80s goodies. I hope you learned something and see you in the next one.